Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Theo Trade Chat. It's Don Kaufman here. It is March 4th, 2024. Spoos this morning off rather mildly. You know, this entire uh, trading session, well, specifically this morning, uh, this open, it's NVIDIA versus the world. <laughs> it's going to get interesting this morning as... Big tech, well, there's a few big areas of sell-side activity inside of big tech, but uh, take a look. <coughs> NVIDIA is holding, well, the entire marketplace together. NVIDIA's got a uh, about an $18 bid under it. Meanwhile, uh, some pretty good sell-side activity inside of Apple and uh, Google. The rest of tech, I kind of down mildly. I mean, Meta is basically flat into the open here, but... Uh, down mildly in Amazon. Obviously, we just talked about Apple, uh, Microsoft getting a little bit of sell side activity here. Tesla a little bit of sell side activity, but uh, it is Nvidia versus the uh, versus the world this morning. Spoos again, they're off about twelve handles. There's no size trading this morning, none. Um, <clears throat> it's uh, uh, 165,000 contracts is light and fluffy versus last week. The bonds, once again, are also getting a little bit aggressive. Oh, I like an aggressive bond. It's, uh, well, they're down about 25 ticks right now, although they're uh, sitting just about at their lows of the session. There's a lot of Fed speak throughout the course of this week, and that Fed speak uh, is coming from Jerome Powell. Uh, he's got testimony, he's got speeches, he's going to do a little dance, make a little love, get down tonight. Anyway, with uh, with that, also seeing some price action inside of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, inside of the dollar. The dollar this morning was dramatically more bid than it presently is, sitting uh, unchanged. But uh, well, we'll see how this one kind of plays out. The dollar once again kind of flattened out over the last uh, few trading sessions. Oil is back over $80 a barrel, has a bid back under it after uh, some sell side this morning. Uh, other than that, <clears throat> again, we're going to come into an, uh, an open. The advanced decline line this morning, it's not great. It's not a great advanced decline line. The, uh, the ticks are going to be fairly negative, prognosis negative. Uh, again, <laughs> looking around and trying to be as objective as I possibly can, Look, you know, you have energy, which has a mild bid under it. The financials are actually offered a little bit lower. That is it. Other than that, uh, tech is, it's not a mixed bag of goods. Tech is seeing some sell side through and through other than NVIDIA. You know, there's been some other players in the room, like Costco continues to get a bid under it. Uh, but even uh, even stuff like Walmart, slightly down in the morning. So your AD line is not going to look too special Again, the uh, the ticks are also going to be negative into today's cash opening. This is going to be a week, though, that's just uh, 35 seconds off. Killing these smalls. I haven't used this computer in like a week or two, so uh, <laughs> that crap can happen. Let's uh, let's resync my computer as I'm doing this, and we might get another another horn as well. Okay, uh, there's nothing like a premature horn. Anyway. Let's uh, let's come in to this week's, uh, you know, the beginning of this week. The uh, it's, it's a premature, it's a premature horn. Let's come into the cash open. You like that? I re-upped my horn <laughs> by syncing my system. I re-upped my horn. Eh, I'm all over that one. <laughs> All right, so uh, as I was saying this morning, the advanced decline line would open uh, pretty decisively negative, which it is. Uh, ticks this morning, okay, actually nothing really going on. I'm surprised that they're even positive this morning. Uh, by the way, a 200 tick means uh, very little in there. Um, <laughs> that's premature, immature, what's the difference? Okay, what's the difference? Um, some big selling uh, hitting NASDAQ right in the first couple of seconds of trade. So uh, we'll go take a quick glance at that. Um, that selling appears to be uh, specific right now. Okay. As I said, there's some, there's some selling, hint of selling in the air. Okay. Not so much inside of NVIDIA, but it is uh, a marketplace that is NVIDIA versus the world. 
uh, that's that's your trading session today. There's no other really bright signs in the marketplace. Uh, Russell has a bid under it, but uh, again, looking throughout, you even have some movement in terms of volatility, decent movement in terms of volatility, well worth paying attention to. Pretty much coming out of the gate, volatility is bid through and through. By the way, if you're looking at these vol futures, okay, it has only 16 days left. And I'm surprised the volatility futures are still flat, not reacting as much, but uh, volatility and all the different uh, expirations starting to make a little bit of a move. That is something, the only reason I'm bringing that to your attention, we haven't actually seen that in, uh, in a while. NVIDIA bid out of the gate. We'll see if this thing can, uh, can kind of hold it together a little bit today. Uh, I don't have any really preconceived notions uh, of price action outside of what is expected move. An expected move, I keep saying this on a week-to-week -week basis, it's only 36 bucks. It seems, the expected move seems still incredibly light given the fact that like every single week in here, uh, NVIDIA is cracking upper, okay, lower and upper edges of expected move. It seems again, very, very light. To, uh, to see an expected move of $36, at least today, $36. But uh, the expected move seems pretty minimal uh, versus some of the risk that we're seeing play out. And that, again, you can take that comment uh, and statement any way you want. That's both bullish and bearish because you, know, you, know, you really think if NVIDIA starts to see some sell side, it's only going to move 36 bucks. Again, I am very surprised. Uh, I should make that uh, clear. The entire week let's let's not look at the uh expected move here but the entire week this is from last friday was only propositioning about a 35 36 dollar move okay and you're you know a minute a minute or two into a trading week and we've already moved you know half that beyond half that it's uh it's all kinds of crazy in there uh, again it's one of the things that uh I mean, I guess if you're going to trade NVIDIA, one of the things you want to learn is be on the buy side of the options, probably use spreads, but be on the buy side of, uh, of options. Uh, there is no volume right now, actually, in the NVIDIA options either. This is incredibly light for even the first three minutes of trade, incredibly light. I mean, obviously, that can change you know, in seconds. Nevertheless, it is worth noting it's not, they're not coming out screaming into NVIDIA today uh, on the buy side. Apple, pretty significant news over the weekend and uh, this morning. There are several firms that have now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily justify it as a downgrade. There are several firms that have downgraded Apple, but there is at many big banks, what they call like a, a strong conviction list. Okay. By the way, the other news in here is Apple got fined $1.8 billion, yada, yada, yada. No one, no one even thought twice about that. What's actually causing Apple to be down is it was removed off of conviction lists at several major firms. And, you know, normally I pay just no attention, uh, oh, attention to this. Like, like I was looking over here, Taylor Swift. <laughs> Taylor Swift made the Apple news. Oh, thank God. Cause you know, there's no football for Taylor Swift to, uh, you know, invade right now. So it's invading Apple. Okay. By the way, it's no longer a Taylor. It's an it, uh, it is an entity. Uh, anyway, with, uh, with that, uh, the conviction lists off of, uh, several major firms, they removed Apple. Okay. It's causing some uh, issues to say the least, but like nobody cares about a $1.8 billion uh, fine from uh, the uh, Euro $1.8 billion. Really <laughs> hurt me. Anyway, uh, stock actually trading down again on this one. What's critical uh, about Apple and uh, something that I had brought up in last week's uh, Wednesday night video brought it again uh, to, uh, to light, of course, in the uh, Friday afternoon video, it's broken through uh, the 180 mark, by the way, let's clean up the chart really quick. 180 looked like a pretty uh, key level in here. And uh, Apple continues to hit lower edges of expected move, uh, not per se in consecutive weeks, but it was getting a little more serious in here. There's a lower edge here, there's an upper edge. 
lower, another lower. Look where we already are right now. We're already at the lower edge of expected move. Uh, again, we're seeing some pretty decent sized price action play out. You know, your six minutes and, and people don't have respect for, for what they're seeing on the screen sometimes. And that's this, look, you're six minutes into a trading week and the entire week's price action has already played out. Does that mean it's over? No, on the contrary, okay? You want to look for signs of markets, okay? And, and marquee stocks, in this case, like Apple, doing things <laughs> that exceed all expectations because it's, uh, it's definitely okay, a warning shot being fired, okay? Uh, I'm also bringing up Tesla, which has not impeded upon the broader markets much. Tesla seeing some sell side activity. By the way, Tesla hasn't impeded upon nor has helped. And Tesla, maybe a little bit of a bit under it recently from uh, 180 to 200, but you know, what's, you know, what's 10% amongst friends? 10% is nothing. You got, you know, Nvidia going up five, 10% every single day. Anyway, Tesla seeing some fairly strong sell side activity though in uh, today's trade also almost hitting its expected move. I pay real careful attention to the expected move when you're six, seven minutes into a trading week and you're like, holy crap. NVIDIA though is one that really, I mean, I tend to look for stuff that's, you know, fever pitch. And that can be both to the upside or the downside. Uh, when we are like last week, you know, with all due respect, NVIDIA didn't do a damn thing last week until Friday. It, it's expected move this week starts off with an absolute bang in here. So again, some uh, fairly strong movement uh, out of one product and one product alone that's driving markets. Clearly, we can make an argument here uh, regarding Amazon. Amazon does have a bid under it right now, but um, volatility, market cap, the magnitude of the move is all fairly nominal, okay? It's not even worth a mention at this point. Uh, every ounce of Amazon's Rally is kind of being offset by something like Microsoft, okay? Apple is now uh, you know, down by like 2%. And, you know, you really do have to look over at the NASDAQ uh, futures and think to yourself, and if you don't, I think it's, it's all kinds of chaos. You got to look at these things and realize, holy crap, how can the NASDAQ futures basically be unchanged where you have both Microsoft and Apple trading to the downside, Google getting hit by 3%, okay? These are big, big moves. And it is completely, again, the NASDAQ is completely unimpeded. And it's simply, well, your number three stock right now, volatility and market cap means everything, okay? This is the exact point that I was trying to make. If you guys uh, tuned into the weekend update, let me come over to the scratch pad, okay? what's holding markets together. You are seeing more of the market right like in front of you just getting chopped out at the knees, okay? You don't even have meta today. You know, the day is young, but you don't even have meta necessarily holding markets together, right? The risk continues to, uh, to build in here and you're one stock right now away from seeing some really uh, horrendous things happen. And, uh, you, of course, you can make, you know, an argument over here whereby, you know, all right, Costco, but it doesn't, it just doesn't have market cap to do this. Like when I say it doesn't have market cap, Costco is not going to sustain anything. Costco could shoot to a thousand bucks. It's not going to sustain anything. Um, it's a $336 you know, billion dollar company. Uh, there was somebody uh, last week, it was uh, Broadcom. Okay, and Broadcom is, is definitely, especially as of Friday, definitely part of the conversation, okay? But it's still a $650 billion company. And again, in light of well, whatever you might think, what, when you're looking at, you know, 10% moves and, you know, you start to rationalize a $2 trillion or a $3 trillion company, let's say a $3 trillion company, which there's only two of them, but $3 trillion company, makes a 10% move over a couple of trading sessions, <laughs> it loses half the market cap okay, of Broadcom. 
It's not that I don't want Broadcom in the conversation. Broadcom is in the conversation because its implied volatility is higher. Okay. But it's, you know, we, we hit the point of alarming and are shattering right past it when we have stocks, okay, that are making this substantial of moves and uh, not impeding upon, okay, the broader indices. I mean, Apple is still the number two stock inside of not only the NASDAQ, but the S&P 500, okay? And look at this, you know, would you think Apple would be down 2%, okay? And we wouldn't see any impact to markets. Google off by 3%. I mean, these are huge moves. And the market cap, Tesla, which Tesla, the only reason it's part of the conversation today, it's similarly to like Broadcom, uh, market cap is smaller inside here, Minor, like minimally smaller, but similar to uh, to Broadcom, but it's down 4%. And again, this is uh, still no bearing whatsoever back to the S&Ps, okay? It's really, really wild. Anyway, <clears throat> Mitch was asking, Don, would it be prudent to sell NVIDIA calls in June, okay? Uh, I would not at this point uh, touch anything in NVIDIA. And for the simple reason, by the way, look at the expected move is going up for the simple reason of this, okay? In other circumstances, <coughs> I am more than willing to sell, okay? Naked premium in a situation like this where there's dramatic, okay? And there is dramatic implied volatility skew. What I am not comfortable with right now in NVIDIA, okay? It's not about being long or short. I don't care about that. Like whatever, you wanna sell calls, you wanna sell puts, fine, okay? What I do not like in NVIDIA, the implied volatility, okay? Seems to me, categorically speaking, it's just, it looks wrong. And I don't take like, there's always stuff that I'll say like, oh, this looks all, looks all wrong, looks all wrong. But when implied volatility, okay, of like the marquee stock, looks all wrong. The implied volatility, in my opinion, is just too low in here. Like it's already gone up. Like it was only supposed to coming into Friday. It only had a $35 expected move, 36. The implied volatility is skyrocketing right now in NVIDIA. Okay. That doesn't feel right to me. It's, it's not just fever pitch. You are seeing demand absolutely through the roof for NVIDIA options, which, you know, a moment ago, we were saying that the under options statistics, clearly I'm not looking at it right now, I'm about to open it. But a few moments ago, we were talking about the option stats and nothing was going on in NVIDIA. I'm going to tell you right now, I can look at this implied volatility and say all kinds of things are going on in here now. Holy crap. Look at the size that took off in here. Okay. Didn't even have to open it. The implied volatility is skyrocketing. Like when you think about options, options decay like this, right? No, options in NVIDIA have actually gone up in value as time has moved forward. Don't believe it? Just look at their expected move. Like a strangle, okay, on a Friday would have been, you know, well, you can see the price of the strangle, you know, 34 $35. Today, that thing is still picking up. So premium is being packed in here. What I, <clears throat> what I don't like in, on here is you might not be getting paid enough for the risk that you're taking in NVIDIA. It's not about whether I think it's going to go up or down, okay? Frankly, okay, I, its days are completely numbered in my book. I, I don't, you know, any pundits and that are getting on TV and, you know, this is going to happen. There's still room to run, okay? They compare it to, you know, the internet bubble. I've seen everything and heard everything. They're all full of beep. Okay. No one has any idea <clears throat> when a stock starts to fly like this. The thing that everybody's getting wrong when they talk about NVIDIA, it's all call option buying period. Okay. That's it. <clears throat> Which means it's trade. It's not investment. Hmm. Hold on. We're going to need a lot of coffee for this one. Okay. Everything that's going on in NVIDIA, everything that's going on right now in like Broadcom, okay? Uh, somebody was SMCI. Mm -hmm. It is all, 
<clears throat> excuse me, it is all call buying. In fact, I saw a statistic this morning. I even know where it came from. Let's see if I can pull it up over here. Uh, damn, I don't think I can actually uh, copy. If I can actually put this into a PowerPoint while I'm speaking here. So bear with me for a second because this should be uh, this should be interesting. Oh man! Oh, there it is. Oh, I got it! I got it! No, son of a! Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Wait, wrong chart. <laughs> I'm like copying, pasting something. I, I I forgot to copy and paste the right one. Okay, son of a! Oop, there we go. I got it! I got it! Okay, I'm gonna show you something. Okay, don't don't crash before I show this. Don't you crash on me now. By the way, when I'm talking about crash, I'm talking about the market. The uh, the source is Bloomberg. Okay. Uh, huh? No, 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 bad animal. There we go. Here's the slide I was actually talking about. <laughs> I seriously have uh, some uh, some issues, some big issues. This <clears throat> is total option day call volumes. The source is Bloomberg, <clears throat> comes from a Bloomberg machine. It was actually in Bloomberg's email this morning. The number of call options is absolutely, and I know it's it's hard to read in here, okay, but this is different years. But <clears throat> in 2021, we saw this immense amount of call buying that was actually causing <clears throat> all the mem stocks, meme stocks, whatever the hell I want to call them, piece of crap stocks, to fly higher. Sorry, I'm doing this impromptu. Anyway, you can see the peaks, okay? And then the market absolutely tanked and the peaks and the marks absolutely tanked. And then obviously in 2022, to a larger degree, it very much calmed down except for a couple of major rallies and then completely collapsed. This, this is the peak right now. Why am I bringing this up? Because it's a trade that's driving the markets and where I think everybody Okay, that starts talking about NVIDIA. And I shouldn't say everybody. There are people that totally understand this, but nobody seems to get on CNBC or Bloomberg and say, by the way, <clears throat> everything that's going on right now in the markets okay, is superfluous to the idea that it's just a trade. It's not an investment. And they're talking about fundamentals supporting this. And they're talking about, which is fine. I don't care. It makes for you know interesting TV. But the one thing, you got to come to the realization, it is a trade. It's a trade. And if you don't agree with that, you only have to look at call volumes to, uh, to see just that. The number of calls being bought isn't just extraordinary. Okay? It is the marketplace. It's the driving factor in here, and it's the marketplace. Look at the number of calls being traded at the ask or above. Okay? This is an all-out assault okay, on this marketplace. Now, SoftBank okay, has been once again implicated in driving a lot of this. I don't give a damn who it is. That's that's the kind of news that they're coming up with these days. It's SoftBank. Who the hell cares who it is? It's going on, okay? And for those of you that don't know this, SoftBank <coughs> in 2021, SoftBank was directly responsible for a number of critical gamma squeezes. So maybe he is, okay, at it again in there. But uh, by the way, SoftBank also uh, blew up billions and billions of dollars the year after that. Mm. Oh, damn, this coffee's good. I'm back, I'm back in Arizona. I got the good coffee. Went to Costco yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yeah, I think I went to Costco. Yeah, it was yesterday. There was fighting, there was biting, there was kicking, there was screaming, and that was just me. <clears throat> I don't think my wife has taken me to Costco again anytime soon. <laughs> okay. There were people there. I don't like them. Okay, I don't like them. People were at my Costco. Anyway, trades... Okay, come and go. Has this one sustained itself longer? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, you'd be careful right now because one of the things I mentioned last week, you know, how this stock was actually going to get completely wild to the downside, it's just not wild enough. We didn't even get close to what I expected to see last week. And I have no problem saying I was wrong last week. Okay, wrong to the tune that we only sold off, you know, 15, 18 bucks two days and then rallied back up. Uh, we are still very much though on that, you know, if you will, in video watch, especially when you see ridiculous things like implied volatility screaming on there. Okay. I don't even know what brand of coffee. I think I actually got just like the, uh, like a Costco, like house coffee. It looked pretty good. 
They didn't have anything that was that good, but this tastes damn good. Okay. Very careful what, what, you know, beans I put in my machine. Uh, my wife wants to break that thing too. <laughs> she doesn't really want to break the coffee machine. She just does. She touched my machine. I was gone for like a week. She touched my brand new coffee machine. She broke the first one. Okay. We blamed it on the flood, but she, uh, she broke my, my coffee machine. <laughs> there's, there's no question. All right. Then I had to file an insurance claim. It's not fraud. I simply just said that the coffee machine was involved in the flood and <clears throat> it's all good. It's all good at that point. Hmm. So Max was saying, or I should say asking, okay, what about passive flow 401k that keep pushing uh, prices higher? So there are several different types okay, of passive inflows to markets. All right, let me, let me just give you this for what it's worth, <clears throat> because Max brings up an excellent, excellent point. And it has to do with this, stock buybacks. By the way, we're gonna look at Apple and discuss this, okay? What are passive inflows that can actually cause, all right, markets to rally, all right? You would get stuff like, stock buybacks is a big one, right? Stock buyback. Okay, stock buybacks are absolutely huge in here. Uh, Apple, okay, known, very well known to be basically one of the biggest in terms of stock buybacks, has not been helping it. <clears throat> Number two, okay, uh, would be like 401ks, all right, and any type of uh, fund flows. What I'm actually referencing in number two is, is something that people don't understand uh, very well. If you have a company like, uh, like Vanguard, right? Van, sounds way cooler. Uh, Van Man. Anyway, if you have a company like Vanguard and they have the Vanguard 500, like the Van 500, right? So what does the Van 500 do? It seeks to basically replicate the S&P 500. When you put capital into your 401k, it just basically, if it goes into a Vanguard 500, they just buy components. So here's something very, very interesting. If you believe that passive flows, okay, could help, but it's not helping in Apple, which is your number two stock, you could make the argument that it would be helping Microsoft. Microsoft is also doing record amounts of buybacks right now and receives tremendous amounts, okay, of passive okay, flow, which is basically if you're in the S&P 500, your crap gets bought. It just does because people are putting capital in there. And I want you to understand that that means nothing. Okay. <laughs> Why? Because every one of the stocks that I've brought up, Microsoft, I'm not saying Microsoft's gone down. It hasn't, but it's receiving, okay, 401k flows, right? Apple, definitely receiving it. Google, absolutely unequivocally. Okay. What else you got? Oh, well, here you have Meta, which just seems to be to the moon. The whole damn thing that's going on right now is a trade. It's just a trade. <clears throat> and you can't put it beyond anything but that. By the way, when we talk about stock buybacks, stock buybacks cannot exceed 10% of the average volume over a period of a week. And they use like a VWAP type calculation, volume, <coughs> average, weighted price, but they use a similar calculation to figure out volume. So it's like a moving average kind of on, uh, on volume. I think it's over the last five days or two weeks. They've changed it a couple of times over the years, but you can't exceed 10% of the overall volume in there. Nevertheless, I, I would make a great argument. There's always going to be some buy side in Apple every single day, but the kind of volume that Apple does, nobody gives a damn. Apple's not trading some 13 million shares. They can't even trade but 10%. But the option volume in here drives stock volume. I want you to remember something that's critical in today's marketplace, okay? The higher the option volume, clearly the higher the stock volume. It used to be, it used to be the other way around. Everything that traded, traded a lot of options. Now it's everything that trades options, trades a lot of stock, okay? <clears throat> yeah, Don, I am in... Uh, I am in Paradise Valley. I'm in uh, Scottsdale, whatever. I'm actually, so we have a rental home here in Scottsdale, okay? But my home is in Paradise Valley and I have to live in a rental home, but I work out of the guest house of the, uh, of the PV home. And I work out of the guest house because the main house is now destroyed, completely destroyed. 
In fact, they're coming into uh, to the rest of the demolition in the next couple of weeks. I have my very own large dumpster in front of the house. It's very exciting. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the uh, we have about 6,000 square feet that has to be pretty much demolished. So <clears throat> we're getting ready to rebuild the uh, whole interior of the house has to basically be done. So we lost 3,000 of about 6,000 square feet, but it doesn't matter because the floors, everything, you know, they have to go. So they're coming in to, uh, to remodel and we already had the friggin' inspectors here and they're like, hey, <clears throat> you got to add sprinkler systems now to your house. <laughs> that's, that's the new code. They come up with like new codes. So uh, we have to add sprinkler systems, like all these like new code things. And I'm like, oh, the insurance company is going to love that. Insurance company has to cover it too. It's good stuff. It's good stuff out here. Hmm. I am not buying the Jose coffee. I am not, Timothy. I can't do it. I tried it once. I didn't really like it. <laughs> oh, it's my coffee has to have, you know, coffee in it. <laughs> Lots of it. That's that's it. Dark. Okay. Not even dark. It it has to have viscosity, man. It's gotta basically you turn the cup upside down, you gotta wait like at least six to seven seconds before the coffee comes out. That's what I'm talking about. 10W40. You got it? All right, let's make that clear. So anyway, one of the things that uh, that I wanted, okay, um, <laughs> don't, don't get me started in the insurance company anymore. Don't get me started. We'll see. Okay, we're still in deep negotiations, deep negotiations. By the way, I don't give a damn about the insurance company. I've already uh, fronted all the money to rebuild the whole damn thing. Okay, the insurance, just beat the crap out of them later. If I waited for insurance, I'd be living in a rental for the next couple of years. <clears throat> so the one thing that I want to drive home is anything you hear about these, any articles you hear, you just saw evidence, okay, from Bloomberg of the call buying, okay? In fact, let me bring that one back up for a second. Just, just bear with me here, okay? <clears throat> so this slide, it's very hard to read the dates down below, very hard. But what I'm trying to show you is some peak call buying, okay? This is peak call buying right here. And it looks like it's August, September maybe of 2021. Let's go see the impact to the markets. <clears throat> and I'm serious, like it's, it's dicey at best to look at it this way, okay? But what you were looking at was right in this neighborhood right here, okay? So, and uh, I apologize, this is again, 21 and 21. Let me uh, extend out the chart a little bit to show you the impact and how significant it happens to be some of the call buying. So 2021 was the, uh, the mommy meatloaf stock contest <laughs> where call buying was through the roof. And <clears throat> it was in large part, SoftBank actually was quoted as having done a lot of it, but this was, uh, there were some really fast and significant drops in here. Make no two ways about it. This was a bullish year that made a lot of money actually selling premium because volatility was rather high. But I wanted you to see right here, as soon as the call buying dropped off the marketplace tank, it came back with a vengeance at the end of the year. Okay. That is precisely what you were seeing in this neighborhood. Again, this is 2021. It's a big call buying at the beginning of the year, huge call buying. Okay huge call buying. Uh, we dropped off. It came back towards the end of the year. Uh, even in 2022, okay, 2022 was just met with a lot of peaks and valleys, but this right here, I would keep a real good eye on it. It's the highest call volume okay, ever at this point. Just there's no if and or but about it. It's the highest call volume ever uh, recorded. <clears throat> Meanwhile, you can see it reflected. But here's the one big differentiating factor with the highest call volume ever. The one thing that I would argue that is different right now, the call buying is concentrated now more than it has been in 2021, 2022, 2023, okay? We're the most concentrated we've ever seen. And my argument is, okay, one underlying gives it up and you're going to see a marketplace that could be going into free fall. The whole crux of the weekend video was, I mean, look, I just, as I said, I try to block out a lot of the noise out there. I try to block out the fact that 
you know, if you're going to be wrong, be wrong spectacularly. But it's been four months of straight up <clears throat> every day that we see price action like we've seen, okay, is another day that all it does is build risk at this point, okay? And I think that too many of the retail world, too many even of our clients, they actually buy into logic that this is going to go on forever. I'm not going to dispel the fact that it can go on longer. It absolutely can go on longer. It's gone on longer than I've ever anticipated, okay? It won't go on forever, and it's going to end very, very badly. When you see stocks like Microsoft, Okay, that start to flatten out and the marketplace still rallies. Meanwhile, Apple is down almost 3% today. <clears throat> Has the NASDAQ been impeded? No, the NASDAQ's 0.2%. That's just, there's not even a move going on inside of the NASDAQ here. Tesla is now off by the tune of almost 5% today. Okay, these are some decent sized moves. Okay, and again, you basically have like one stock and man, here you go, you got Microsoft coming back. Microsoft comes back to the rescue, okay? <clears throat> There's just not enough to sustain markets if NVIDIA comes off. And that's gonna be the, uh, the critical risk that this marketplace takes. <clears throat> the only question is how you wanna take it, okay? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, oh, Dawn's actually in PV right now. <clears throat> I've actually got uh, Todd Sweet who uh, obviously works with us is uh, is coming down to uh, to my office here, my office, my office in the backyard, <laughs> overlooking the pool. It's, it's very tough. It's very very difficult. Okay, very difficult. Hmm. All right, let's uh, let's cruise around and talk a little bit about uh, some of the positions that we're in. Caterpillar continues to have a bid under it. This is one that is one hell of a fierce move. I uh, again, I look at Caterpillar keep shaking my head on this one and go, what the hell is this stock? Who wants to buy this thing at, uh, at this price? I think it's pretty shocking. Uh, not because it's having an up move. It's just how many up days in a row can you possibly have? <laughs> it's Caterpillar. This is where I think Jeff Bierman has made some excellent arguments whereby I kind of feel like a marketplace has run out of things to buy and you start seeing stocks like Caterpillar have parabolic moves, okay? 15% year-to-date basis. I mean, can we argue that Caterpillar was mispriced at some point? I, I don't think you can. Uh, you look at stuff like Walmart, pretty spectacular move. You know, if I hid, honestly, if I hid this right here, okay? In this right there, <clears throat> you would look at that and think, oh, is that NVIDIA? <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong in saying that? Okay, I don't think I'm wrong in saying that. It looks a hell of a lot like it. Look at Walmart. Now, granted, on a percentage basis, it's only up about 11%. Okay, NVIDIA is up like 75%. That's right. By the way, if you missed that, NVIDIA is up 75%, 76%. Give it a minute. It'll be up 77% on a year-to-date basis. Okay, This is where people start getting into the notion, ah, don't worry, sell everything. We'll just buy NVIDIA and we'll be good. Okay, It's, it's just, again... We, uh, we passed dangerous and went straight to uh, this is, you know, hitting a little bit of critical mass. By the way, I also am a little bit intimidated today. The market at points last week was down 20 handles and we didn't see any movement of volatility. I'm going to remind you, we were down at one point, it was 22 handles on the button last week. That was the, uh, the big sell-off last week before the rally. We were down 22 handles. And we didn't see any volatility budge. What is interesting this morning is that volatility is actually on the move uh, in the longer durations. Okay, not so much the volatility futures, which is perplexing, but uh, most volatility is on the move right now with markets. Okay, eh, kind of stagnating a little bit. By the way, the advanced decline line has actually picked up to some degree. Bear with me here. I just want to look over at uh, ticks again. Ticks are a minus 200. There's nothing going on there. I mean, you look at the ticks and they're like, they're straight down. The reason I just said there's nothing going on, the volume in the s and is it's gone. There's just no volume whatsoever We're doing 2000 contracts a minute. So, uh, all right, onward and uh, onward and upward. This is a marketplace that's literally at this point, look at 3% on Apple. Apple is uh, trend down. It's uh, not so good. And I'm still not making much money because I'm still short uh, a little bit of NVIDIA, a little bit of uh, Meta. 
By the way, NVIDIA, that one intimidates me to some degree now, okay? Not Meta, okay? Meta irritates me. There's a big difference. <laughs> big difference in my book. Uh, nevertheless, okay, just hear me out for one second. We're going to look at expected moves in a second. But before I even do that, I want you to realize NVIDIA starts to sell off a little bit today. You, know, you could easily see a 300 plus point move in NASDAQ. Okay. There's nothing behind this right now. I mean, Microsoft is a 0.2% move to, you know, to nothing. Amazon is bid, but 0.8% isn't exactly getting it done against a Tesla that's down 5%, a Google that's down 2.6%, and an Apple that's down 3%. There are some big moves going on. The monsters of tech okay, are definitely being sold over here, but a 3% bid under NVIDIA is enough to keep the marketplace sustained. NVIDIA, even if it goes flat, NASDAQ drops like what? You know, another 150 points and down 200 in the day. NVIDIA starts to actually sell off. You're down 300, 350 easily on a trading session. Okay. Risk reward is, uh, is a wild thing in this marketplace. Now, you could make the argument, well, what if Apple starts to rally back? I'd agree. There's going to be some upside here, but there's too much pressure right now. And quite frankly, this is the first day that we've actually seen Meta really kind of fading. I mean, it's not even 1%, <coughs> but Meta hasn't had too many down days as of late, uh, up 44% year-to-date basis, but its expected move is even more interesting. How many weeks can this thing crack the upper edge? Here's a hit of upper edge, hit of upper edge, hit of upper edge. You would expect a pretty dramatic pullback at, uh, at some point here in the near future. Okay. Uh, yeah, anybody that's coming in to buy anything today, it looks like they're actually uh, selling all bids, meaning that okay, as the market bids up, uh, it looks like we're actually selling them. We'll see, like this, by the way, two or three minutes of coming off here means absolutely nothing, but uh, keep an eye on uh, Microsoft because Microsoft joins some of the club over here and that's, that's it. They're sell side across the board at that point. And that might even uh, have some influence back to NVIDIA. So I wanted to look a little bit at expected moves. I'm gonna back into this for a second. First, we're gonna look at the QQQ expected move. All right, so last week, the Q is actually closing to the upper edge of the expected move, okay? Again, just to be a little bit you know, mindful, upper edge, upper edge, it's two weeks in a row. Week before that hit the lower edge, upper edge, upper edge, and lower edge, but okay, where it closes is critically important. Okay, on the year, the point that I'm trying to make over here on the year in the NASDAQ crossed outside the lower edge of the expected move and closed outside of it one time. Okay, all right, you've closed outside the lower edge of the expected move one time. Okay, it's the first week of the trading year. Um, if we go over to the SPX, okay, let's go to the SPX. <clears throat> How many times have we closed outside that lower edge of the expected move on the year? Just zoom in. Okay, the exact same thing, one time people, okay? You have one breach of lower edge of expected move on the year. Uh, to be fair with that comment, there's only been one, two breaches to the upper edge of an expected move, but you know, how many consecutive weeks we've been closing at the upper edge of the expected move has been pretty dramatic. So uh, just be mindful of kind of statistics behind it. Uh, are we overdue for sell side? Sure, why not? Nevertheless, QQQ this week, what kind of expected move are we looking at in there? Okay, so uh, the March 8th expiration survey says, okay, it's five days from now, obviously, it's about the $7 okay, and 76 cents. Now, I'm gonna write this up because I just want people to see how I do this a little differently, but so you have this $7 okay, and uh, 76 cents times 40, Okay, it's roughly a $310 move to NASDAQ. So just bear with me here because I'm going to show you exactly why I'm doing this. So the NQ is positioned to move plus or minus $310, but that's according to QQQ. Let's go look at the NQ itself. Now, guys, when you pull up NQ, <clears throat> you have to pull up NQ, okay, H. Okay, 24, and you'll see HQN24. Why the, you know, the full symbol? <clears throat> it's what you just simply have to do when you use like that think back tool. 
it's okay, five days out, 336. Okay. So the QQQ says it's going to move 310, the NASDAQ itself, 336 and change. Personally, I trust the Qs more. That one is derived from the QQQ multiplied okay, by 40. This one is derived expressly from the NQ itself. I just wanted to show you, there is a little bit of difference in there. People, which one do you go with? I like to go with <clears throat> coughing up a furball. It was fine last week. It's too dry here for me. It's too dry. Um, I got I to gotta drink coffee. Desert thing is too dry. I'm like a lizard. I'm a lizard. Okay. Lizard being wet with uh, coffee. It's good stuff. Nice though here right now. I mean, it's been like the 70s every day. Okay. Because I know some of you are like, you know, in places like Chicago, Minneapolis. Actually, I heard Chicago was really nice uh, over the weekend. That doesn't happen too often. I'm sure Beerman though will still complain. He didn't go outside. <laughs> Beerman's not an outside kind of guy. You know, he's, he's, he's not, he's, he's an indoor animal. Okay. Keep your animals indoors. That's uh that's Beerman. All right. Hmm. Anyway, $310 in movement is being priced into the QQQ for the week. The reason I wanted to bring that to your attention. Okay. It's not that I don't trust it. Okay. I am going to say this though, <clears throat> the expected move. Okay. And the implied volatility. <coughs> of the cues, okay, uh, for all intents and purpose, okay, is, well, look, four days out now is basically at 19. Just bear with me for a second. If you look at the spiders, four days out, that's the March 8th, is at 13. <clears throat> the cues have once again gained a substantial volatility above and beyond. The QQQ, its volatility is now well above and beyond what is the spiders, okay? <clears throat> Most notably, because you have one or two stocks that's kind of ruling the roost in there. Uh, be very mindful. There's probably some great trades between QQQ now and spiders. For those of you that have been around uh, a while, okay? There was something I did like years ago called the tetrapod spread. It's not a half bad time to look at stuff like that there's again, there's big volatility differentials surrounding spiders and the cues <clears throat> for argument's sake, okay? One might want to go out and sell premium in one, okay? And buy premium in another. Question I think you have to ask yourself is which one do you think is going to move more? I think the QQQ is going to be suited to move uh, substantially more than its expected move, okay? Above and beyond, even though that spiders have a, a lower volatility, this is probably the place to sell premium. Qs are probably the place to buy premium. Okay, in the event that the market's going to move, you know, huge, it's going to be the QQQ driving that uh, that move in there. It doesn't matter whether it's to the upside or the downside. So that's something that I can cover a little bit more uh, later in the week as I kind of review a couple of trade opportunities in there. But this is it's really starting to widen out a bit. And what I'm looking at again is implied volatility. Okay of you know spiders versus cues and historically speaking and you guys look i know a lot of people look at studies and so forth you can look at something called vix which is s p 500 volatility index okay and you can also look at something called vxn but <clears throat> the vxn is the you know cbo nasdaq volatility which is again considerably higher over here um this is 30 days out <laughs> i don't think it does uh it really justifies though nearly as effectively as some of the shorter duration options in here. So, uh, damn, I absolutely hate when I click on the last over there. What a piece of crap this thing is, okay? When's May 10th coming? Not too far. By the way, May 10th is when they're going to officially move all the rest of the accounts over to Chucky. I'm scared. Hold me. Uh, ooh, Microsoft, okay? Now it's some real sell side. At first, it was two minutes. Now you're seeing some real sell side. Uh, something impeded upon those markets seconds ago. And uh, sure enough, it was Microsoft. Okay, uh, back to the SPX for just a brief moment. SPX, what did it do last week? Well, again, if I go to the scratch pad, the SPX was slated to move 64 bucks last week. It moved shy of $64. Last week, okay, 
all the movement came basically on Friday. Okay. On Friday morning, by the way, the way that, that Friday went, not unexpected. I literally said to you on Friday morning, what was going to happen? Okay. As soon as we started rolling, okay, we, we showed the distribution curve. As soon as we started rolling up the hill or down the hill, we were going to move and move big. Okay. No feelings. I didn't give you a bias to it because this is gamma risk. That's gamma risk at its best. Okay. Gamma risk rips us to the upside. Quite frankly, I'm surprised we didn't hit the upper edge of the expected move. And I am. Okay. Uh, this week, okay. This week, the expected move is almost identical. It's still 64 bucks. And again, the expected moves that I derive come from, you know, like end of a trading day. So on Friday, I had the unusual circumstance of Friday markets where I was closed at 5 p.m. I, I hopped on a 5.50 flight. I still was watching markets into the close, okay? But I recorded, uh, I recorded the video a little bit earlier. Didn't make a difference because still spot on for what was, you know, price to, uh, to occur in the marketplace. Nevertheless, okay, you can see right around about a $64 expected move for the entire week, okay? Uh, this week, look, there's a lot of news that's due out throughout the course of the week. You have Jerome Powell, okay, that is going to be speaking. I don't know why they have him listed here at 10 p.m., whatever, okay? <clears throat> Listen, Jerome Powell is going to be testifying, okay, to, it's about monetary policy, yada, yada, House Financial Services Committee, yada, 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 okay? This happens a couple times a year. It's not that big of a deal, but there's going to be some remarks in here that can definitely freak markets out. The bigger numbers though, in my opinion, okay, this week are gonna be like jolts, okay? And jolts that can definitely rock markets. It's actually out during, uh, during the trading day. Uh, take a quick glance over here. There's more speeches from him, Federal Reserve. There's also an ECB announcement. Look, there's a lot. And then the week basically ends up with uh, the employment situation, okay? Again, I just, I can't help but feel, and I don't even care about the advanced decline line. The expected moves, I know we didn't hit anything last week. It still looks really light versus some of the price activity that you're seeing in the markets, okay? I just cannot stress that enough is I just don't, I don't really want to sell any short duration. Forget about long duration for a second. I don't want to sell any short duration premium, okay? until I really see this marketplace start to open up. And it's, I mean, right now, like, look, this marketplace is opening up. There's a lot of risk in here because you're down to, to literally one stock that's holding this crap together. And I know, again, every time somebody hears that, you know, I get another email, they're like, no, oh, hook, okay? I know, but the market cap here doesn't do a damn thing, okay? Again, to, to give you a, a quick feel, so, all right, Broadcom, okay? Broadcom right now is up 1%, up 1%. What's 1% okay, of a $600 billion company? Because that's what it is, right? What's 1% of a $600 billion company? So it adds 50, $60 billion of market cap, right? Yeah, okay? That's no, nothing. It's nothing. It's not even close to that. The point that I'm trying to make, all right? Look at NVIDIA. Look at NVIDIA. I mean, we're talking about, you know, adding six, seven, or $10 billion. Let's, let's add $10 billion of market cap, okay, to Broadcom. NVIDIA is up 3%, okay? And it's 3%. And again, just to give you the magnitude of this, it's 3% of a $2 trillion company. Like, holy crap, okay? The numbers there, they big, okay? Again, you're talking like, you know, NVIDIA moves by 3%, and a 3% move in here, Okay, is like 30% of the total market cap of products like you know Netflix. That's the kind of crap that you're looking at. Actually, I haven't looked at the market cap of Netflix in a while. It's pretty big now. Huh? No, it's still only 270 billion. Yeah, no, we're not far off. You know, hundred billion dollars of market cap movement in a given day, okay, is moving like it's over a third of Netflix value. Not not healthy. Okay, not healthy in there at all. Nevertheless. Okay, onward and upward here. All I'm doing this morning is sitting here waiting for this thing that looks like, in my opinion, to break a little bit lower. Uh, NASDAQ right now under a bit of duress, but okay, we have seen time and again, I'm actually surprised the financials are bidding here. Okay, we've seen time and again, markets seemingly finding a way. Today, we apparently are rotating right now 
out of tech into the financials. Again, I see rotations right now out of tech into financials. It's not in a big, meaningful way, but looking down at the uh, list of usual suspects down here, okay, there are a lot of the financials that are now bid. All of these were down this morning. All of them were, okay? And they all look exactly the same. So again, you are seeing like a cyclical rotation moving right now towards the financials, okay? Their people can be a trade into itself. That'll pick up the advanced decline line. Moreover, taking a look at the energy, okay? The energy complex saw some sell side activity. Oil took a little bit of a hit this morning right after that uh, opening bell. So we're seeing a little bit more sell side inside of uh, oil. Nothing too uh, big or strategic going on in here. In terms of a week for oil, just being above $80 a barrel. The one thing I keep pointing out, that looks incredibly inflationary to me. Um, you know, when people are starting to talk about inflation coming back, there's one thing that really resonates with me. And this is, this is going to be a big, scary talk. And then we're going to look at a few positions and I'll turn it over to Jeff Bierman. There's one thing that really, really resonates with me. I mean, big stuff, okay? And I was thinking about this and I didn't want to say it on the uh, Friday afternoon video, but I'll say it now, okay? <clears throat> Inflation definitely feels like it's making a comeback. Mm. It feels like it. Like, look, I'm not going to sit here and talk about PCE numbers. I'm not going to talk about the CPI and so forth. To me, inflation is making a comeback because this marketplace is incredibly okay, strong, incredibly strong. First, the first thing I would say, an incredibly strong market absolutely okay, and unequivocally can drive inflation okay, uh, onto itself, meaning that can drive in inflation, which in light of whatever you might believe could stave off any Fed rate cuts. So be mindful that this could be a critical driver. Now, the Fed does not want inflation. Can the Fed talk the marketplace down to some degree? Possibly. But I have some deep concerns about inflation returning. Not only is the market straight up, oil has also caught a really big bit. Uh, say what you will, but a move from 70 bucks back to 80 bucks <clears throat> is significant. That is, again, incredibly inflationary. We are, okay, really at some levels right now that concern me, not because of valuation. I don't care about the PE ratios or valuation. I don't even care about the technicals in here. I care about the in fact that inflation comes back. The Fed's not going to be cutting rates. Okay, People are back talking about hard landings and soft landings. All it takes okay, is one significant move lower in this marketplace, and you don't have an inflationary problem anymore, okay? If you are watching, and, and again, it's not the US markets that really brought this to my attention, okay? And I'm gonna give you a little more summation of this because I'm leaving you kind of on the edge over here. <clears throat> are Japanese markets, okay, really improving? I'm gonna ask you that question, right? Is, are the Japanese markets really improving? By the way, if you pull up a max chart of this, uh, the Nikkei doesn't even go back that far, but uh, so EWJ, we can look at EWJ. Okay. You're all the way back into like, you know, basically the all-time highs. Um, this is an ETF. It doesn't track it exactly. It doesn't track it perfectly. Japanese economy absolutely rocking. No. Okay. It has nothing to do with that. Um, uh, here you go. Up to 40,000. This is the Nikkei. Has a lot to do with obviously uh, the fact that the uh, currency is getting absolutely demolished in here. Okay. We're caught up in a pretty big currency trade in here, but uh, performance, if you're talking about like fundamentals and so forth, performance of a given marketplace can also have a substantial amount to do with your currency. Meanwhile, it's not a good argument for the US because the US dollar has been strong on a relative basis, okay? Nevertheless, when you're looking at US markets right now, okay, this looks, again, wildly, wildly inflationary, that your dollar is just nothing comparison. So it's just debasement of currency, like through and through. All of that changes, okay, if this, uh, if this market actually uh, tanks to some degree. This is going to be a really dicey period that, that we're going through right now, though. 
uh, especially on the front. It is an election year, Fed, okay? The Fed has to do something, and I know everybody thinks about the politics, but the Fed's going to have to do something about a marketplace that's actually going to be driving inflation. I would say that is my overwhelming concern moving forward. Like a lot of people would probably disagree and say the Fed will never do anything. It's an inf- like it's an election year. Okay, I disagree on this front. I'd have to really disagree. I think we're in a critical, critical spot though in this marketplace that if something's going to happen in here, it's going to be sooner rather than later. They can't let this thing continue to run unimpeded or not just inflation picks up. They're never going to be able to lower rates, which is going to cause <clears throat> stuff like the 10 year. Take a look at stuff like TNX. They don't do something to curb this marketplace. Okay. This TNX is going to pick back up. And that is not going to be good for nobody, right? If you haven't noticed, the 10 year is already on a bid. And everybody seems to think like, hey, zero interest rate policy was the driver behind markets, but now we're at 5%. We continue to see markets moving higher. Interest rates don't matter. Only problem is they do. This is going to be fairly complex. We're going to be looking at it a lot for the next couple of days. But uh, again, be very, very careful at this point in the midst of especially Jerome Powell speaking throughout the course of this week. Um, we may get some hints okay, uh, of an economy that is starting to once again overheat. And that market itself is a damn good indication of just that. <clears throat> I realize I'm running out of time over here. I wanted to spend a much longer time explaining the dynamic, though, of the market, the Fed, okay, currency kind of debasement in here. Uh, leave some of that to Brandon Chapman as well. By the way, <clears throat> not doing anything right now. Caterpillar, Wells Fargo, I'm in them for better or for worse. Caterpillar is the one that's the most frustrating right now, up another $3 in today's trading session. Still plenty of time in this trade and almost a $16 expected move. We are well still within the wheelhouse of uh, plausible on that particular trade. Uh, meanwhile, as I said, I kind of ran out of time over here. I apologize. I'll come back to some of these thoughts tomorrow. Uh, I would expect that the, uh, the NASDAQ is going to pick up a little bit of steam to the downside. Okay. Nothing too crazy right now. But the reason I think it's going to pick up steam to the downside, you just had Apple crack the 3% mark. Okay. Microsoft actually saw some sell side activity. Uh, Meta, okay. Meta's actually down on the day. Tesla's off by 5%. Okay. Can you believe how well the NASDAQ has actually taken this? It's extraordinary right now. One stock is actually holding us together. You see any sell side activity whatsoever inside of NVIDIA, it's really going to open the NASDAQ to, uh, to the abyss to some degree in here. So uh, be aware of it. Anyway, with, uh, with that, I do have to bring on uh, the Professor Jeff Bierman's going to come in here. By the way, those of you that are tuned in, uh, like Catapult, <clears throat> I am going to do some trades in Catapult today. I have to do some trades in Catapult. The Ultima Theo Theta portfolio, it's a decent day. I'm actually going to soften up some deltas in there, roll some crap out. Um, the Theo Theta Large and Theo Theta Small portfolios, okay? Those I'm going to hold off until a latter portion of the week. So there's going to be some trades coming out today. Trades coming out today will be Catapult. Trades coming out today will be those of you that are in the uh, Ultima portfolio, which is that portfolio margin account. I'm going to hold off here, okay? I've got 74 days left. Uh, I will eventually roll this little monkey back out because uh, if, especially if we see some sell side activity, it'll help me on that roll substantially, but I'm trying to burn as much time as humanly possible out of that. Ticks, uh, ticks flipped over positive, advanced decline line went positive. A lot of that has to do with the financials, which are being, again, clearly rotated into, we're rotating and buying financials. Buying financials looks like selling tech, okay? There's not a lot of places to run to, not a lot of places to hide. Be aware, again, there's going to be some uh, Jerome Powell testimony. If anything new is coming out of the Fed, it's going to come out here this week. Stay tuned. Jeff Bierman's coming on right now with Theater of the Absurd. It pretty much defines Jeff. Critiquing jaw-dropping parabolic charts, part three. Stay tuned. <laughs> 